What's up, YouTube? Erod212 here with another video. So what time is it? It's that time. Time for the back nine. What are we going to discuss? Wolverine-related books you should be looking at now. All right, so, so as I said, uh, one of my favorite topics now, we're talking about Wolverine and Wolverine-related books with all the news of Hugh Jackman coming back and uh, CGC just announced a private signing uh, that a company's having that they're going to be sponsoring with Hugh Jackman. I would love to see the prices on that. Um, I think it's time we start taking a look at what books uh, we should be looking at in the future for Wolverine and what books are really good books to pick up now. Um a lot of books have gotten hot. Over uh, the eighty-eight with the Dead Deadpool cover has gotten hot. The Wolverine One miniseries and uh, issue number one of his ongoing series. All books that have seen a little bit of a climb right now again. So it's that time. Also, issue one thirty-three, another book that always just keeps gradually climbing as the lore of Wolverine keeps getting bigger and bigger. But you know what? Let's take a look at what the guys have to say, and. Uh, We'll get into that. But you know what? Before we do that, and I forgot and I apologize, big shout out to my man Ben C from CBSI for hosting this great website. Go take a look at it. Mellow Fellow on whatnot. Check him out. Always bringing great books, variants of Star Wars, Guru there. Great, great stuff. Also, my man Phil from Vintage Comics and Toys, um, the man who compiles all of this information and makes this all possible. Shout out to him. Check out his win website, Vintage Comics and Toys, for his Vanish number one exclusive. Uh, you don't want to miss that cover. It is really nice. But you know what? Let's start this list and see what we have here. All right, so Phil says, it's time to focus on Wolverine Key. Hugh Jackman will be donning the claws one more time in the next Deadpool movie, and many books are selling. As we head into the offseason, it might be wise to grab Wolverine Keys, and they could be safe place to go up in value in later of 2023. So... Adam goes with NYX number three, the first X-23, one of my picks. Everybody that knows me knows I love this book. Uh, Logan was so good, I don't see how they don't bring that character back. The actress has said she would love to play her again. Collectors love her. Fans of superhero movies love her. Let's make it happen. Sales of the book are still very strong after the comic boom. Raw prices are in the few hundreds. Yeah, this is a $400 book minimum, uh, high grade right now. Um, Nine eights, I still still range over a thousand dollars, I believe it is right now. So it's still a great, great. Place. If anything, it's an underrated book. Uh, Jack Cornblack goes with a book I was just speaking of, Wolverine number one, the first solo comic. Uh, this is the book that that for me was huge when he ran this whole series right here. Oh man, I I, I was a kid in a candy store. I will go with a, a real answer and not take the obvious first appearance key. Joe Rubenstein killed this cover for Wolverine's first titled comic book. And that's it, his first titled comic book. Just an iconic, and that is a great cover standing on a pile of bodies right there. Claws unsheathed. Uh, Wolverine at its best. Chris Nums goes with Hulk 180 and 181. First cameo and first appearance. I will take the obvious. Hulk set number 180, 181. This is a forever key. Forever Keys, they are. Uh, really good books. I, I appreciate these books and uh, love how the fans still clamor over this. And there's still that debate, 180 or 181. Um, now we're going to go with Marvel Comics Presents number 72, um, the Weapon X origin. Terry Hawkins says the thrilling origin story of Weapon X is under $20, where it was at $50 during its peaks. Good book to pick up this, 73. There's a couple of them in this Marvel Comic Presents story arc uh, with great work by Barry Windsor Smith, I might say. So books you might want to take a look at. Topher goes with Hulk 340, the Hulk versus Wolverine rematch, the iconic Todd McFarlane cover. If there's ever a cover to rival Hulk 21, it is this one. Big time key book in the Hulk and Wolverine rivalry. Like I said, McFarlane crushes this cover. I mean, this how many times has this been homaged and recreated? Actually, McFarlane is doing a signing now, so get your books in because right in that blue area, that light blue area is a perfect spot for a Todd McFarlane signature on this. And then Peter Renner picks a book I probably would have picked. And this is X-Men 133, and it's his first solo story. 
I'll take Uncanny X-Men 133, which gives us the first solo Wolverine story, proving he is the best there is at what he does. That whole sequence, and like I, I've mentioned this before, but that whole sequence when he's battling on the ground in the tunnels and you see the ferocity that he brings, man, that just made me the biggest Wolverine fan ever as a kid. Just loved reading this stuff. I was buying this stuff straight off the rack, so I'm showing my age there. Uh, no, one of my favorite books right here right now. Uh, it's, this is Ali's pick, and this is All New Wolverine number two. It's the first Honey Badger. I'll take All New Wolverine number two, first appearance of Honey Badger. X-23 is getting more and more unaffordable. She feels like the next affordable step. So if you haven't read this, Honey Badger is the clone of Laura, uh, X-23. But her personality is unique. Honey Badger is a ferocious animal. Um, and that she is. It is. Uh, Gabby is a pleasure to read. Just a fun young character. Uh, a, a duet with these two females in a movie. I would love it even if it was a Disney Plus series. But they would have to add a little violence to it. Because Gabby's kind of ferocious. All right, so uh, Valiant goes with Wolverine Origins number 10, and that's the first appearance of Dokken. Dokken has been hinted to be in the MCU, so it's in the back of people's heads that he'll show up to replace to take his father's legacy. Third Claw variant is reasonably priced in raw condition. Still a rarefied air book, a couple thousand dollars for that Third Claw. This is a 1 in 100, I believe, so not an easy book to find uh, condition sensitive, you know, so... Look for it. I, 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 it took me years to find one at the right price, but I was able to find one. I thought it was an affordable price, and I'm super happy. A book that stays in the PC forever. And now we're going to go with Phil's pick, and he's going to go with another iconic book, man. Uh, who didn't love this series when this came out? Uh, I thought that uh, Millar and McNiven to just crush this. And that's Wolverine number 66. It's the first Old Man Wolverine. Hugh Jackman should be playing Old Man Wolverine again. There's still a story to tell to fill in the gaps between the last X-Men movie and Logan. I need to get some copies. Yeah, this is great. There's a black and white variant that comes with it. And then you have the the uh, the third print. I said It says Old Man Logan going across. It goes across multiple issues. Um, I forgot what printing. I think that might be the second printing on this. All nice, nice books for you guys to get and, and take a look at. And then um, that's the picks for the group. But you know what? Let me show you my pick. But before I even show you my pick, I want to talk about two books. I, I pondered putting both of these as my pick, but then decided to go with just a regular Wolverine book. But I do want to talk about two variants that if you ever see them at an affordable price, you should scoop them up. They are super rare. But first one is the Wolverine Nabisco variant, and that uh, Bill Sienkiewicz did the cover for this. So you had to mail in multiple Nabisco products, uh, the, the um, proof of purchases, and mail them in within a certain time frame to get this free comic book. So it is condition sensitive. I believe there are 2,500 of these in the census approximately. I had the opportunity to buy one in like an in 9 0 and I didn't pull the trigger, and I kicked myself in the head for it. Every single time because it's a book I really want in the collection. And the other one is even rougher, tougher, tougher book to find. And that's that J. Scott Campbell Wolverine um, variant where Deadpool uh, is unmasking and it's uh, Logan. The thing with that book is you had to be, if so if you were a store a retailer, you had to send it back 50 specific titles to Marvel to be able to get this book. Uh, that incentive was so tough that Marvel had to readjust it so that more people could uh, be able to get this. So it's it's a white whale. It's kind of like that Siege book that uh, the Deadpool has. Um, just super, super tough books to find. I don't even know the count. I'd have to look at the census on it. But two books that you should always look out for if you have the extra cash. Don't, uh, to me, quality investments that don't go down. And then you know what? Let's take a look at my pick right now. And I'm going to go with Uncanny X-Men number 212. We cannot have this list without mentioning Wolverine and Sabretooth's first throwdown. Truly, in continuity, their first ball was in Wolverine 10. But Uncanny X-Men number 212 predates that issue. This is a significant issue because it sets the tone for the decades-long decades, decades long rivalry. Wolverine got me tongue-tied there. Uh, I love this cover. 
just a great, great book. I believe that's a Romita, a Romita Jr. cover. Uh, great, great book. Just a great topic. Let me know in the comments what books you think should be in there. Do you agree with these picks? What picks would you make that we didn't put in there? Um, also, check out these two videos because there's always great content in these videos. And until the next one, peace.